age as an upper respiratory infection disease. And then the uh, SAO government has two major objectives in the near future. First, we will focus on developing the economy and we will be uh, promoting Hong Kong to overseas uh, on all fronts. Secondly, we're going to plan for full no normalcy, full return to normalcy. And we're going to um, regularize uh, effective measures. And in the light of um, um, evolving circumstances, we will keep enhancing our response and we'll keep reviewing the situation so we could um, uh, respond to new threats and new changes. And second objective, uh, our objective is of course to focus on de economic development and um, the um, reopening of the border is of course one of the most important uh, and effective measures in economic uh, promoting economic development. And as we uh, move in tandem with um, the situation around the world, we will start uh, again promoting Hong Kong. Uh, since the 8th of January, we started the first phase of resumption of quarantine-free travel. All the uh, boundary control points that were working fine. We are able to uh, have orderly resumption of travel. And from the 8th of January to the 30th of January, some 700,000 travelers um, crossed the border to the mainland and uh, some 600,000 visit uh, persons came to Hong Kong. So we have, uh, um, um, we are in a new phase of return to normalcy. And uh, various reports show that um, for the catering industry, the business turnover is going to exceed what, $10 billion. And during the Chinese uh, New Year, the retail sector also saw a rebound. Uh, everyone had a smile and uh, everyone was happy and they enjoyed the Chinese New Year. Our aim is to resume um, quarantine travel fully with the mainland as soon as possible. Uh, during uh, the past period, we've been in close co co liaison with the reference authorities on the mainland. We, I am confident that soon we will have full resumption of quarantine-free travel across the boundary. And I uh, hope to be able to announce good news soon. That would include uh, uh, removing the PCR test requirements, increasing or, or, or removing the quota arrangement and so on. And also, we will also consider removing all travel restrictions for arrivals from overseas, such as um, the vaccination requirement or the um, rapid antigen test uh, before arrival. Now, Hong Kong is moving quickly towards a full normalcy. So, on the mainland and overseas, uh, we are planning uh, promotion activities for Hong Kong on all fronts. Two days later, we're going to start a major relaunch cer uh, ceremony and we'll be announcing various activities to promote Hong Kong. Um, so uh, there is a theme, Hello Hong Kong. There is, will be a major publicity event. The government will be leading various delegations over to overseas countries and to the mainland to actively promote Hong Kong, um, covering um, business, commerce, um, tourism, cultural exchange, and so on. And th this Saturday, on the 4th of February, I'll be leading a Hong Kong SAR delegation to visit Saudi Arabia and the United Emirates. And the, the um, deputy... Um, um, uh, Attorney General, um, the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury, and 30 delegates uh, from um, the professional sectors, uh, innovation sector, uh, business sector, and financial services sector will uh, also be traveling with me, and then they will uh, be promoting investment and uh, cultural exchange uh, with Hong Kong and so so we would provide for business opportunities the second objective of a full return to normalcy now for effective measures they will be regularized and then we will have regard to the actual situation to keep enhancing our response to emergencies so we could deal with new threats in the process of planning for full return to normalcy we will have to consider 
um, um, other measures in response to the pandemic. And also, we will take stock of the experience we've had so far, and then we will incorporate effective measures into our day-to-day -day work, making them regular measures. Some individuals believe that uh, there is need for us to conduct an, an independent investigation into the various uh, anti-epidemic measures. Um, some others uh, disagree, to, and I disagree too, uh, to that uh, proposal. Now, in the past three years, we uh, around the world, we faced a, a new disease, a new virus, it um, caused um, the death of uh, um, uh, 6.7 million people to pass away. And then um, for the UK, the death rate is, uh, um, compared to Hong Kong, is 1.8 times of our death rate. And then uh, we, we immediately advise measures to combat the ep epidemic. There's never the best practice or best way to deal with um, such an issue. I agree we need to take stock of experience so we could deal with new threats in future in a more effective manner. In the past um, um, few months uh, since we took office, we've been uh, reviewing the various measures. We want to make sure that our government is able to respond to new threats and new changes. Since the uh, assumption of office of this uh, term of government, we've been uh, reviewing various um, measures and enhancing these measures. First, we have set up a new command structure, the CE, as, uh, as leading a, a coordination task force. And also there is some special task force led by the Secretary for Health on combating the epidemic and then different um, heads of uh, um, Directors Bureau also lead different task forces to respond to um, the pandemic so that we could um, come up with some measures uh, that are targeted and, and rapid and effective. And also we have um, um, a, alert um, um, response um, system so that we could take various measures as necessary. And also we have uh, enhanced the safety efficiency and then we have strengthened our healthcare system and also management of uh, residential care homes. And then uh, those were four measures. And the fifth measure is that uh, we have um, various target measures to um, manage high-risk schools, in particular the older and the young. The sixth measure is that uh, we have adopted a science-based measure to gradually remove social distancing measures and various other measures. And yesterday we removed the isolation arrangement. Since this government took office, we have been planning to um, connect with the world and also to plan for full resumption of uh, quarantine-free travel with the mainland. So these are the uh, uh, outcomes of our, very, of our effort to keep reviewing and enhancing our measures. The self measures that we uh, uh, have an interdepartmental coordination so that we are able to mobilize government manpower uh, at the first instance. And there, could, there are also community care teams that we could mobilize as necessary. And the different government departments, including the Labor and Welfare Bureau and the health, uh, Hospital Authority, will keep uh, taking stock of experience as the pandemic evolves. And the effective uh, measures were included in guide, into the guidelines, and they will become regular measures. They will also keep um, reviewing and updating the guidelines. So this would it would be the best and most effective approach in uh, coping with um, pan uh, the pandemic. And also uh, in planning for full return to normalcy, we have to consider uh, various um, issues arising from the epidemic. For example, the future arrangement for isol community isolation and quarantine facilities. I have asked the Deputy Financial Secretary to coordinate this effort. The, they will assess uh, possible changes uh, to um, the, uh, in the pandemic, and then uh, he will analyze the needs of the community and so on. And so while we have uh, sufficient um, uh, emergency facilities at the same time, we could uh, make good use of uh, some of the isolation facilities and the sites um, where these facilities are located. Now, during the pandemic, we have been uh, working hard to uh, respond to different circumstances. Uh, I and my team will focus on uh, promoting ec the economic development of Hong Kong 
and we will also plan for full return to normalcy. And we will uh, keep enhancing our res uh, response in a pragmatic manner. Thank you. Floor is now open to questions. Please limit yourself to two questions. Please first identify your press outlet and use our microphone. We will start with the journalist in white. Kari, I'm from Bloomberg. I wanted to ask, uh, Chinese tourists will be facing barriers to obtaining uh, tourist visas to come to Hong Kong compared to Macau. What do you plan to do to tackle this challenge given that the city needs mainland tourists to survive the city's economy? And when do you plan to make the announcement on mask removal? Secondly, uh, what will you discuss on your trip to the Middle East and to what extent might this reflect the government's efforts to diversify assets? Um, and will you be seeking to court Middle Eastern companies to IPO in Hong Kong and or attract other assets to the city? Thank you. Uh, you repeat your second question. Uh, what will you discuss on your trip to the Middle East and to what extent um, do you feel that this reflects the government's efforts to diversify inv investment assets? Will you be seeking to court Middle Eastern companies to IPO in Hong Kong and or attract other Middle Eastern assets to the city? Uh, well, first of all, uh, since this government uh, assumes office, we have been preparing uh, various measures so as to open up Hong Kong and uh, make uh, decisions uh, according to uh, data and risks. I have explained earlier in my beginning uh, speech uh, about the various measures that we have um, put into. Uh, we have just uh, yesterday removed uh, the last restriction, uh, which is the isolation order. There is no other restriction other than the mask and we all know that, uh, according to uh, the advice of different uh, medical experts, uh, we have the winter surge, which is a period of high risk. Uh, we have to be able to ensure that we will be able to uh, pass this winter surge. And when we successfully overcome this challenge, then there will be big room for uh, consideration uh, to see how uh, we will how and when we will remove the mask. And I think in the whole preparation for full resumption to uh, normalcy, then uh, the mask is obviously a thing that I will consider seriously uh, of uh, lifting. Um, then when we pass the winter surge, when this high risk period uh, is passed and we manage it, then I will look at the uh, situation at that time and decide uh, when will be the best time to lift it. But lifting the mask uh, will be a measure that I seriously will consider. As regard my trip to the Middle East, then obviously this is one of the programs that I have said many times since the announcement of my policy address that we will tell the good Hong Kong story. Now we have resumed normal. Uh, it is time for us to go out and tell people that Hong Kong is as normal as before the COVID-19. And the business opportunities and all the advantages of Hong Kong uh, being an international city and also a special administrative region of our country uh, has all sorts of attractions and advantages for people uh, to grasp so that they will not lose their opportunities uh, to develop uh, and realize the potentials in Hong Kong. Uh, I have uh, formed a high-level delegation comprising over 30 uh, very successful and very influential representatives in different sectors so that we can go and tell the good Hong Kong story, the opportunities here. Then, of course, um, the visit to the Middle East is also a reinforcement of the policy of President Xi Jinping uh, in his uh, visit uh, to Saudi Arabia when he make uh, his policy speech about uh, how to capitalize on the initiative of One Belt, One Road, uh, so that we can um, help uh, different countries uh, to um, make use of good opportunities uh, that we can offer, as well as we uh, make use of the opportunity to develop our economy and 
further strengthen uh, the different potentials uh, and increase our competitiveness. Uh, I have a high hope uh, that my visit uh, will be received well by uh, the governments and the uh, local commercial sectors, and I look to uh, some fruitful results as a result of the visit. Hello, Taiman. Next question. On the left, the lady at the back. I'm from Tsingtao Daily. Just then you said that you disagree with the idea of setting up the Commission of Inquiry. Can you tell us why? Some export members are saying that it would be a waste of resources and we would be, in effect, holding previous government officials to account. Can we set up a separate review panel instead? Recently, we have seen a peak of Hong Kong people from the mainland returning to Hong Kong, but there were long queues at the boundary control point. The officers stopped checking the PCR test results. So what's the obstacle? What's holding up our discussions with the mainland? Why can't you re tell us a new plan yet? As I said, I disagree with the idea of setting up a COI. We have entered a new phase of COVID. We have two objectives for this phase. First, promoting economic development. Second, resumption of normalcy. We have to look forward. I agree that we have to learn the lessons to ensure we can respond to possible future challenges. Over the past seven months, we have taken stock of our experience and we have been enhancing our measures. I've just discussed the detailed plans. These measures will help us meet future challenges. Handling any pandemic will require adapting to the circumstances. I can toss around a hundred plans today, but then something new comes up tomorrow, and that will call for new plans. So we will have to work on the system in tackling pandemics. This will also involve a strategy policy philosophies. We will need swift decision-making, effective implementation, and we have to be result-oriented. These principles are universally applicable. Whatever risk comes up in the future, we will need swift decisions, effective implementation that lead to results. First, in terms of systems, we have made changes to our systems. So we have set up this command and coordination group or CCG. And we have also enhanced our safety margins. For any probe we do, we have to target various factors. Enhancing safety margins matter because of this. Omicron tr is transmitted very quickly. No one saw this coming in terms of how quickly the variant spread. This was a global problem. So there was a need to look at the data and arrive at the decision. Enhancing our safety margins also mattered. So this would depend on the risk level. For some drugs, We may set aside the infantry of 30% above our usual level, but in other times we may have to bump it up by 50% or double the infantry levels. So these are what I mean by safety margins. Second, manpower. For large scale operations, you need the manpower. That's why 
we have this government-wide mobilization plan in place. This is also mentioned in my policy address. To ensure we have the capacity to respond to challenges, we have to manage risks, enhance our safety margins, and also have an effective decision-making and execution mechanism. And we have to continuously monitor the situation to get a sense of how things are developing as quickly as possible and then arrive at a decision. We also have to regularize the tried and tested measures So we will incorporate measures that worked into our guidelines and we will continue to look at the situation and learn the lessons. The current term government takes stock of the experience. And this is also the kind of organizational culture I want to build up. This is the more effective way forward. I look at the results in whatever we do. What are we trying to achieve? We want to stay flexible and agile in meeting challenges. Next question. We're almost out of time, so we will take this question as the last question. Hi, Hi, 全面和內地通關我們也相信時間是會快的我們希望早日向大家宣佈而所謂的全面和內地通關是不需要核酸檢測的我們但是現在的核酸檢測的需要我們也是同各方面傾緊如果取消核酸檢測我們的部署同埋準備是怎樣亦都有多個部門需要通知我們在這方面大家很積極的 plan for PCR test free arrangement um, uh, but we've been, I'm sure we are all you know um, acting in a positive manner well, there is close liaison and discussion and uh, the, in principle uh, that is a shared wish so uh, we just need to work out the implementation details. As for, uh, uh, apart from removing the PCR test requirement, we also want uh, our practice to be aligned with that around the world. Um, um, so there will be a free resumption of travel, even in including international travel. So Hong Kong will return to full normalcy. The only restriction still is the mask wearing requirement. But as I said, after the winter flu surge, we will uh, uh, seriously consider whether to remove the mask wearing requirement. And since we, uh, we've only just uh, removed the isolation order arrangement for a day, we've uh, read reports that there is actually a transition period in terms of um, medical care arrangement. I'm sure the uh, health, health Bureau will monitor the um, developments in the community. And during this transition, there will be communication with the ref parties so everyone knows what is the right approach. And then we could also compress the transition as far as possible. Uh, we need to let the public know to what the arrangement is. So after the removal of the isolation order, the Health of Bureau will be an active discussion, this communication with the reference parties. Thank you. That's the end of the um, media.